Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I am excited to show you this tournament game from the 2023 World Tournament. I'm sorry it's been a while since my last video, thank you to everybody who has encouraged me, and I appreciate the enthusiasm. I moved houses uh, over the summer and have been very busy, but I'm excited to get back to this tournament and to show you my games. This is the round of 128. So 128 people are still in the tournament at the time of this game. And I am playing Mixer 259. I am Shadow, and let's jump right in. So I allocated one eye, and I got incredible card draws at the beginning of the game. Cruel Weather is always great to see, and Shadow's Gather is a very powerful combat effect and also a powerful reinforcement effect if you need it. So I'm very happy with these card draws, even though I, I rolled the Palantir and won't be able to play either of these on turn one, it's still a great draw. My opponent got Last Battle and Eagles Are Coming, neither playable, with two Palantirs, a little sad. We did agree to use two tokens for games one and two. It's a best of three match, and by default, players do not play with any tokens in games one and two, but if players agree, they can use tokens. So we agreed to use two tokens. We thought it was a little more balanced. So my opponent is playing free people. Let's see how this game goes. I start by mustering Isengard, obviously, and then they draw a card. It's possible they might have considered using the card draw token right here. Um, you know, it's not ideal to have to use that early, but it is one of the things that help you balance the game. So they did not use it, though. They're saving it for later, and they drew a card outright with a Palantir. And they drew Wisdom of Elrond, obviously not the best card early on, but not horrible. You do get to play it with the Palantir and cycle it. So, all right. Um, let's see what they do. I So I draw a strategy card because why not? I know I'm going to have to at some point draw a card because neither of these I'm going to play on turn one. And I'm not getting Saruman to war yet because it is theoretically possible if they moved and Gandalf died and they had Mirror of Galadriel in hand then they could get Gandalf turn one and so there's just no reason to do that so I'm just temporizing and drawing a strategy card they play Wisdom of Elrond and redraw Book of Mazarbul okay could be useful um, if Gandalf dies you can bring him back in Grey Havens and then or even potentially Woodland Realm and then use Book of Mazarbul to bring the dwarves immediately to war and that can help defend the dew line. All right, I get Saruman now because it's not possible for him to get turn one Gandalf, even with Mirror of Galadriel. And then they move and they miss, and I miss them, and I'm moving my armies around. So this regular unit from North Dunlin to Moria, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Is it worth it? It's a single extra hit point. I think the benefit is that it turns on Devilry of Orthanc and also fighting Uruk High. And I did draw Devilry of Orthanc, so. Yeah, maybe it's worth it. My plan is to come and attack Lorien with Dol Guldur and Moria army and to bring the, the Mordor units all the way up to Woodland Realm and hopefully besiege two Elven strongholds before there is much mustering there. And my opponent did not draw a lot of muster or did not roll a lot of mustering turn one. And so it makes me somewhat hopeful. And also... Um, one thing to consider is this this muster token. So that does make it a little bit harder to get them both under siege without any mustering, but we'll see what happens. Okay, they move, and I hit them this time, and uh, I said it was the same roll, right? Uh, but this time it's a hit, and it's a one in reveal. Do they use, do they lose Gandalf? Yes, I think that's exactly right, because now if they roll a Will of the West, they'll be able to get Gandalf next round, and Strider is a useful guide when you're revealed. All right. I move my armies to Morinon, and then I move this army back out of Moria onto Holland. And that is a little inefficient. I could have just uh, moved from North Dunland onto Holland with this Isengard unit, but I guess there is some benefit in being able to play Devil Rio of Orthanc. I'm not sure it's worth a whole extra half army movement just for that combat card. I, I just didn't probably just the the order was slightly wrong i should have i should have waited seeing that they had a second character die knowing that they would be likely to move a second time just a slight inaccuracy on my part 
I did want to get an orc on them because that way it increases my chances of revealing them into Moria or certainly through Moria if they move twice next round. All right, I will... So I just moved armies around. That's fine. We draw cards. They get a vial of Galadriel, obviously very good for purposes of... Um, if they can make it to Mordor. And I just saw they drew Power of Tom Bombadil and they used Wisdom of Elrond as a Palantir to muster the North towards war. And they could now use another Palantir to get the North towards war with Power of Tom Bombadil and, and the North is activated. So the North can do a good job of defending the dew line. We'll see what we roll and if that's relevant. I draw Palantir of Orthanc. I'm I'm happy to see that whenever there's pressure on, I mean, I'm generally happy to see it, but I'm also happy to see it now because there's pressure on the free people player to use their will of the West to get Gandalf. And so the Palantir may stick around or at least I'll get a ring for it. All right, allocate one eye, roll one more. They do get their will of the West and two musters. So they can get the North to war this round if they want. All right, let's see what happens, though they don't even need the Palantir to do it. Okay, they hide the Fellowship. Okay, reasonable. <laughs> we do want to keep the Fellowship moving along. I muster Sauron towards war. Okay, and I play the Palantir of Orthanc here with a Palantir die. I don't know exactly what I'm thinking there. I guess... I don't know. I want to see where they end up mustering. I wonder if it's worth saving that a little bit or if I'm going to at least threaten playing that. Why not use a character die to play it? And then I'd have my Palantir to cycle another card. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, they pass. I move armies. They get Gandalf. Gandalf shows up in Grey Havens. All right, makes a lot of sense. I move armies some more. I'm going after Woodland Realm and Lorien. They muster the north the hard way no with a token so they just use their token their first token to muster the north towards war and i'm obviously saving my muster die so that if they do get the north all the way to war i will be able to bring in the witch king all right um and having said that i just realized uh they are going last because of the token. So in fact, they can bring the North to war or the dwarves to war as they wish without me being able to bring in the Witch King. And that's the benefit of the token. They get to take the last action of the round. So they can bring them to war at the end of this round and then at the start of next round, start mustering up. All right, so they move armies and they got Erebor prepared, fine. And now I get my armies in position, what else can I do? And they move the fellowship. All right, so that's interesting. So they're taking a safer approach for the fellowship because that way they can move once now, be hopefully not be hit, and then move again immediately at the start of next round and make it through Moria, having only allowed me to roll on sixes. So they use their token to temporize, and they used it to protect the fellowship. I think that's totally reasonable. Another alternate approach would have been to use it right now to say, um, move the fellowship. Um, they could have moved the fellowship on their second to last die and then muster the north all the way to war or use um, Book of Mazarbal and gotten the dwarves to war just before, uh, just at the end of the round. And then they would have an elite in Dale and I would have to attack Dale right away. So, yeah, interesting. Um, did I even have a character die showing? Yes. So I did have a character die showing, so that would have been risky if I had something like Nazgul Strike, Nazgul Search, any of the tile drawing cards. So I didn't happen to have those in hand, but I do think that was that was the more reasonable approach for them. Um, and I am, potentially, they're going to have a lot of pressure for what they want to do with their first action next round because I have Palantir of Orthanc in play. So they're going to, if I roll a Palantir, let's see what I roll, let's see what we draw. Um, okay, they draw Ents and Guards of the Citadel. I draw Rage of the Dunlendings and Shelob's Lair. They get rid of Heroic Death. Yeah, it's interesting. I guess they're planning on doing Book of Mazarbal. I do think Heroic Death is a stronger combat effect than Power of Tom Bombadil and Book of Mazarbal. So if I were planning on playing either of these... 
if I'm not planning on playing either of these, I probably would have preferred the heroic death. So that's minor, but okay. So let's see what they roll. They have five dice on turn three, which is nice. And so they get some nice, nice flexible roll. Maybe they'd want a little bit more movement given they only rolled one eye. Um, but I did roll my Palantir. So they did roll their Will of the West. So they will they can get rid of the Palantir of Orthanc without spending a ring. But right now they are one step and exactly over Moria. So I think they're going to have to move right away. And then at least I get to use my Palantir to uh, get one card draw out of Palantir of Orthanc. All right, so they think they move, which I think is absolutely correct because I just I've drawn three character cards, not that many, but there are five that could hurt you. Nazgul search, Nazgul strike. Obviously, Nazgul strike is not great right here, but still, um, and any of the three tile drawing cards, not huge odds, but definitely decent, at least fifty percent. I don't know, maybe, maybe even a little more than that, probably around fifty percent. Okay, I miss them, so that's nice for them. They made it through. Moria safely, and now at least I get to use my Palantir. I play Shelob's Lair because there's no other card that I'm particularly excited to play right here, and I get to redraw. The nice thing about Palantir of Orthanc, unlike the Witch King where you have to redraw the kind of card that you played, the Palantir of Orthanc lets you redraw e from either deck. So I'm gonna, I'm guessing redraw a strategy card. Yeah, so I redrew a strategy card, and I'm happy to see Swarm of Bats because it's gonna let me attack into Old Forest Road. All right, so now, all right, so now they get the dwarves to war right away with two musters showing. So I, I'm definitely gonna have to react to that. So that's nice. The dwarves are straight to war. I get the witch king first, interesting. So I guess I say to myself, they only have two musters. So I might as well, the difference between one muster and two muster is not that big. I would rather get the Witch King to increase my chances of taking out Dale, and if I play Swarm of Bats, I'm going to get to redraw that. I guess that's what I'm thinking. I might have been tempted to just rush into Dale first and then besiege Erebor before it gets two musters in there. All right, so they muster into Erebor. I think that's right for sure. I attack Dale, and I'm not playing a card. I have Swarm of Bats. And I'm not worried about scouts. They've drawn five strategy cards. What? Why am I not playing Swarm of Bats right there? I could have... Wow. That shocks me. I mean, they don't have... They don't have... Um, scouts. But, whew. I can't believe that. And also, like, I want to cycle into Corsairs. Like, cycling more strategy cards is not bad for me okay that really surprised me i think that's a mistake better to play swarm of bats there all right but i didn't and then i rolled a six so okay worked out for me i i don't think it was the right decision it worked out but i don't think it was the right decision all right um they now move armies because the north is now at war they can just move that northern regular straight into the woodland realm and then they move to weston net so how much does that one regular do inside Woodland Realm? I don't know. I might have preferred getting another elite in Erebor just to like make that super buff. It's only adding a single hit point because if I besiege it, then you'll go into um, you'll go into siege. But getting that that um, that extra regular, putting that regular back into the um, reinforcements, the dwarves. Uh, only have two regulars in their force pool. So getting a third regular in the force pool means that you can actually stay at five units in the siege a little bit longer. Because if I besiege it, then the leftover extra sixth unit goes back to reinforcements. Okay, anyway, so they must, they move armies. It does reinforce Woodland Realm a little bit. If they happen to draw into Thranduil's archers, that really will make Woodland Realm more formidable. Otherwise, how much difference does it make? I don't know. Okay, so now I have a tough choice. I have four attacks. Very nice for me. What do you do? What what would you do here? Do you, do you continue with the plan of going after the elves, leaving Erebor open? Do you go after Erebor? I don't know. I mean, I, I do have some pretty good combat cards here. And I have Shadows Gather. 
So that will let me, so if I go after Erebor, it will let me reinforce from South Rune. And there's this really nice um, ability to take over Iron Hills, where as you move through it, it counts as a free region. And if you move through it, then you do capture it. You can't play Muma Kill, you can't play Shadows Gather or Shadow Lengthens through something that has a unit in it. But if there's no, nothing there, then you can take it. Okay, so um, let's see what I do. Think about what you would do here, where you would attack, if anything. You have four dice. I mean, full hand of combat cards. Okay. Um, I attack Erebor. And upon reflection now, I continue to think that's probably the right choice. Um, I don't think I can leave Erebor open while going after Woodland Realm. And obviously, this is a pain in the neck to take. It's eight hit points. But I can muster up in South Rune and reinforce relatively efficiently with Shadows Gather. So I think that's what my plan is. All right. Um, they pass, which I think is right. I don't have any character dice left. So there's no threat, and there's no threat from um, me messing with the Fellowship. And I don't have any Palantirs. So I'm not getting any more additional benefit from Palantir of Orthanc. I would think they're getting rid of Palantir of Orthanc. Maybe they're moving a second time. But all right, let's see what they do. They're not mustering in Iron Hills. And by the way, I think it's absolutely right for them to wait because I'm probably going to attack into Erebor now. And if this battle goes poorly, then um, they will be able to attack me back with this Will of the West if they want, depending on how badly it goes. All right. So interesting. So I'm taking my time. I'm getting I'm getting prepared to muster the South Rounds and Easterlings. It's a little strange to be using an attack die to not attack. Generally, you want to be using your attack dice to attack as shadow, but I actually need musters here. I think I'm going to, I can foresee that this eight hit point army is definitely not enough to take out this eight, point, eight hit point army. So I want to use my musters when I roll, when I have them, and that's what hybrid dice are for. It's usually you use them as armies, but sometimes as musters. So I think this is the right play because that way, at this, I'm going to attack a little into Erebor, and then at the start of next round, I can muster even more into South Rune, and then reinforce Erebor. All right. And by the way, I did have to leave a couple in Dale because there was this one regular that moved in from Old Forest Road, so I ca I couldn't leave Dale entirely empty. All right. Also, I'm giving myself time to draw corsairs, so. Even if they have Kyrdan's ships, they wouldn't be able to play it because the elves aren't at war yet. So focusing on Erebor first. first. Okay. Um, interesting. I'm moving armies now because I foresee the problem with them mustering into Iron Hills. And I, and I probably did that out of order. If they give me a chance to take Iron Hills and I, I probably need to do it, I'm going to do it. So this... This just avoids the possibility of them blocking that um, that movement. Maybe I could have played it a little riskier, but I think this is just that just keeps things under control. All right, and I don't move from Moria into Dimrald Dale yet, and instead do this Far Harad to Near Harad move because I'm hoping to draw something like Pits of Mordor or Shadows on the Misty Mountain, and then play it in Moria and then reinforce. Um, into move from from Moria into Dimmerald Dale once I have a little bit of a bigger army, so I think that's why I'm waiting on that move, and I and I eventually want to get near Harad to either Umbar or West Harondor. I'm hoping I'll draw into Corsair. So, okay, these are these are minor sort of um, optimizations. Maybe Iron Hills wasn't necessary, but I think it's the safer play. All right, so they go ahead and get rid of the Palantir of Orthanc. I think that's absolutely right. While you're showing Will of the West. And you don't really want to risk getting revealed through Moria, so all that is good. And then I get the South Rounds and Easterlings all the way to war. So I'm just playing it very chill with Erebor, making sure my units are in position. I'll see what I roll next time to see how much to pressure that. And maybe, maybe I just end up leaving this army here on Erebor and don't even go after it. I would hope I'm probably going to go after it, but it feels a little bad to discard so many cards, but um, that's just how it goes sometimes. These are great cards, a lot of really good things here. What would you discard? I think Threats and Promises has to go. 
after the, after all the, the effort I went to getting this Isengard regular. Um, ooh, but now I'm noticing I actually drew half orcs and goblin men, so I can play half orcs and goblin men into Erebor and then use Devil Re of Orthanc as a combat effect. So what the heck? I think I have to save Cruel Weather. Maybe I get rid of Rage of the Dunlandings because I don't have a huge army in Isengard right now. That's not where a lot of the action is, and I'm trying to conserve troops. Maybe I get rid of Foul Thing from the Deep and just not worry about the Fellowship at all and just play Crow Weather once. The nice thing about Foul Thing from the Deep is that it can hit Strider. Not not a huge chance, but certainly some. All right, I don't know what I discard. This is a tough, tough choice. All right, they get rid of Power of Tom Bombadil. That's easy. They declare in Dermal Dale. Obviously, that's happening. I get rid of Threats and Promises and Monsters Roused. Wow, Desperate Battle. I mean, when is the last time I threw away Desperate Battle? I guess I like Relentless Assault as a combat effect, and also it does give me a lot of flexibility if I draw into New Power is Rising, um, or just generally need to be flexible with a Muster Die or a Palantir Die. I can go after, maybe I can even go after Rivendell sometime, who knows? I don't know. That's a, I, I might have preferred Desperate Battle over Relentless Assault. Hard to know. Okay, I allocate one eye, roll two more, and then get this mustering roll. Pretty slow action, and they get a whole bunch of movement. Not ideal when I have this many eyes, but the Fellowship's doing okay. So, yeah, I mean, what do you do as free people? You can play two, two character cards Elven Rope and File of Galadriel. And you can still use this Palantir to either draw a card or play Power to Great if you really want. And then move twice. I think I would start off moving, see how it goes. Maybe maybe hide, maybe move a second time. I think you can move at least twice. You're doing okay on Corruption. All right, so they start by playing Power to Great. Okay. Not... I, yeah... If they had a bunch of musters here, maybe that's nice. Okay. I mean, it is good. It does mess with me. I don't really have cards I want to discard. So, all right. Elves have progressed towards war. I muster. Yep, I muster down in South Rune. They... Oh, wow. So they're not moving the Fellowship. So they separated Legolas into Lorien. Very cool. Very cool. So would I have done that? I don't know. I feel like you have had some good military defense in Erebor. Do you want to not just run with the Fellowship? I know I have four eyes, but so what? You get hit twice. I might have moved once. I might have moved once first. I mean, the benefit of doing it this way is that you're now there's like some serious pressure to get my army onto Lorien before Lorien musters up, but they didn't actually roll any musters. So, and I have a bunch of cards in my hand. All right. It does give me a chance to sort of react. Let's see what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start by attacking Erebor once. Okay. I'm going to play, I'm guessing I'm going to play Swarm of Bats just to, because this is a serious army. This is an eight hit point army. I don't want to take a lot of damage. I can take some, but not a huge amount. And if they have some combat card like Charge or, you know, even No Quarter or something like that, I don't really want to take those hits. So I'm guessing Swarm of Bats here. Swarm of Bats. What? Ha! <laughs> I hadn't I hadn't seen their cards. I forgot. I forgot that they had charge. Okay, so my I am at least there. I'm I'm consistent with my pass self. That said, I would have I would have played Swarm of Bats a while ago. Um so uh when I attacked into Dale, but alright, worked out. Okay, so that was good. I saved myself effectively one hit from that and, and possibly, you know, more. So this limits my my danger levels. Um, I get two hits, a little above average there, and they get two hits, which is just about average for them. Um, and I take two regulars, 
because I know that I'm going to bring this army from South Rune in. It's going to be a six hit point, six uh, unit army, plus four units here. Very pleasant. All right, so I stop. I draw my Witch King card, and there we go. All right, so Legolas ability, getting the elves towards war. How worried am I about besieging Lorien before they muster up like crazy? Maybe I should be worried about that. Like, I'm not really worried about Dane Ironfoot's guard. I mean, it's not great, but it only gets them one hit point. And, and I'd sort of, I'm sort of assuming they don't have it in hand right now because they might have saved their Palantir. So the chance of them top decking Dane Ironfoot's guard is relatively low. I think that Lorien may be the bigger threat right here. I'm guessing I'm going to muster in South Rune because I'm just I'm looking at Shadows Gather. But I wonder if the more strategic play is to just use this muster, get an elite into Moria, and then move to Dimmerel Dale. Yeah, I don't even get there. So maybe maybe I have to use this muster to get rid of Power Too Great. I don't really want to get rid of half orcs and goblin men and foul thing, but it's probably better than. I mean, I'm not getting rid of cruel weather, but if I if I I can foresee that that this is going to get powered up, so I have to act on that. I think. All right, but instead I get an elite in South Rune. I think this is this is probably a minor inaccuracy. Or potentially major inaccuracy if they roll a bunch of if they get a bunch of musters. Um, oh man, and they're also so so yeah. So the nice pl the nice play about getting Legolas into Lorien is that it's also of course defending Woodland Realm. So yeah, you gave up on quite a bit of movement this round, but you just seriously defended two Elven strongholds basically where I'm attacking. So I think this is actually, that was actually maybe a really great play. Because now how am I going to take Woodland Realm and Lorien? The only risk, I think the, the real risk here is that they're not going to, they're not going to roll enough musters next round. But, but I think it's, I think it's probably the right play. And that way they're only moving once with the Fellowship. Okay, I go ahead and play my Shadows Gather. I'm just trying to take care of um, Erebor. I'm going to deal with deal with Lorien and Woodland Realm as ever I need to. They move, and I hit them, and I get to Corruption. I'm assuming they're, they should... I don't think they should take a random here. Um, I mean, it's not that bad to lose Strider, but because they're not revealed, but still, they're at zero corruption. They might draw into Athalas or some other thing, so I would not I would just take the corruption. Yeah, take the corruption. Okay, good. All right, so now I'm attacking into Erebor. I have really prepared this, and the nice thing is that if I, if this doesn't go too poorly, I will be able to pivot this army from Erebor and to take out Woodland Realm. Probably, maybe? All right, so I think we come to kill is what's getting played. It's a little risky because I might need that army card, specifically an army card, to take out power too great. It's not just, it says, um, while this card is in play, shadow player cannot, no, here, shadow player can force the power too great to be discarded by using any one action die result and discarding one army event. It doesn't say strategy, it's an army specifically. So Rage of the Dunlandings and King Revealed does not, do not work because these are muster cards. So I'm guessing I want to play half orcs and goblin men because I it's a very nice effect with three with four elites here. But I don't know, maybe I play Rage of the Dunlandings. We'll see. All right. I play strategy card. They I think play daylight. Yeah. Daylight and I play we come to kill. Yeah, so I'm risking it a little. I do have effectively two card draws to get rid of power too great because I have the redraw from half orcs and goblin men and I have the card at the start of next turn um, and if necessary I can go attack woodland realm first so all right we'll see um, three dice for me oh my gosh what three sixes against a daylight that is unfair that is low odds that is one in 216 to roll three sixes I mean it's a little better than that because I have leadership, but still, that is low odds. Holy cow. All right. 
they get three hits back. Obviously, like they don't want me to roll six, three sixes most, but at least if they're doing some damage back, it helps it helps them survive in Woodland Realm. So, okay, that's a little above average for them. It's way above average for me. And now I get we come to kill. Two hits from we come to kill, a little above average there. Expected one and a third, and I get two. All right, so that is really sad for Erebor. Oh my gosh. Am I going to press? I assume I'm going to press because in case they do draw into Dan Ironfoot's guard, I want to take care of this. I redraw Horde from the East. Very nice to see Deadly Strife. I don't think I play a card here. Yeah, no card. I roll my six. They roll their five. Okay, I have a decent sized army still in Erebor. Maybe enough to take out Woodland Realm even with a little mustering. So that was unlucky for them. I think they played their cards perfectly. Sometimes you get unlucky. All right. Ah, oh, of course. And I draw into Corsairs of Umbar. That's pretty good. All right. Nazgul search useful. But what do we discard here? They still have Strider as guide. I do probably at some point want to pivot my Nazgul and get a fifth Nazgul up here if I can, maybe, or come down to Lorien, depending on how many musters they roll. Maybe King is Revealed goes away. King is Revealed. All right, so I discarded King is Revealed. Allocate one eye. Roll one more. They get two musters. Okay. You know, they might have been happy seeing three because they can get Woodland Realm and um, Lorien mustered up. All right, so they start by mustering right away. That seems correct. They get an elite into Woodland Realm. I move armies. Okay, so I've left Erebor entirely empty. A little risky if they walk in, but I'm not too worried about it. I have enough attacks. If they do something like moving into Withered Heath or something, I can just attack it right away. If I attack into Woodland Realm and then they do a field battle so that they can retreat into Withered Heath and then move into Erebor. Fine, I got Woodland Realm. Like, doesn't doesn't really matter. So I just want all my units. And if at some point this army in Dale, I mean in Woodland Realm when it attacks, gets whittled down too much, I have to be a little careful of them mustering up in Carrick, but it's still like a good amount of movement to Erebor. And I have these armies in Northrune that can come and help guard it, probably. A little risky, but I think I... I want the attack power. All right, and then they muster another elite in Woodland Realm, which makes sense, and then I attack it. Now, I have 12 hit points. They have eight hit points. I do have some good cards. I mean, Deadly Strife is very good. Um, and they just played a Daylight, and they only drew one strategy card, so their chances of redrawing into a second Daylight were one in nine because they had 18 cards, so relatively unlikely, and they drew advantageous position. So... Um, my Deadly Strife is likely to inflict a good amount of damage. So, all right, we'll see. They move the Fellowship now. They used up their musters. Time to move the Fellowship. It's a little interesting because I am I I definitely want to get, you know, to attack Lorien before they have a chance to muster up. But I did not... I, I did draw a army card, but I'm definitely not going to use, I'm not going to discard Corsairs of Umbar to get rid of Power Too Great. So I still need to cycle into another, um, another army card. So I'm going to play Horde from the East. Okay, they move. I miss. Fine. Um, I move what the, oh my gosh, I did not expect that. All right. So I moved my whole army to Parth Celebrant. Okay, cool idea. So what am I doing? I think that I am giving up on the elves. I'm like, I like my cards too much. I'm certainly not going to get rid of Corsairs of Umbar. You're going to muster up in Lorien anyway. I can see that's going to happen. And I am going to take this opportunity right now to play Corsairs of Umbar. Because at the very least, you're going to have to give me a ring if you've drawn into Keratin ships. And if not, I'm just going to take it out while I can. 
and I might as well reposition myself onto the fellowship. Okay. So they pass. I'm going to attack into Woodland Realm first. Why did I do that army movement? I guess I just, I wanted to slow down the fellowship. I guess that's what my thinking was. Two extra rerolls on their second movement does significantly slow them down. I wanted to get this army to Umbar anyway. Okay, fine. Um, I am noticing if they have, like, through a day and a night, Dol Golder is definitely vulnerable. I don't know how much I'm thinking about that. My military isn't going so fast that I can't just completely ignore free people military victory attempts, but I do have Corsairs of Umbar, and if they vacate Lorien, I can go take Lorien. If they vacate Lorien to go after Dol Golder, then I can take it more easily, so... I'm probably not too worried about that play, is what I'm guessing. All right, I play, yeah, Deadly Strife, advantageous position, doesn't help that much against it. I get two, oh my gosh, five hits. What the heck, I forgot. Wow, five hits, that is way above average. You expect, you expect three and three quarters when there's no combat card played by the free people with Advantageous position, I'm guessing it's like three and a half or three and a quarter or something like that. So I'm, I'm pretty far above average with five. And then they get four back at me. Fine, but yeah, I mean, five hits. What can you do? Oh my gosh. All right, so do I press here? I think I don't. I think I, am I really in that much of a rush? I guess I kind of want to. I think I don't. Okay, I don't. All right. And now, so I got Orcs Multiplying again. All right, fine. I'm probably going to play that and attack again. So I attack Woodland Realm again. I, weird. So I used an army die to do that because I want to be able to play Nazgul Search to pivot my Nazgul, I guess. I don't really know. Okay, um, I play a strategy card. They have nothing to play. Wow, they draw. They drew all the blue tiles. Would be nice if they make it to Mordor. Okay, um, yep, I play my Onslaught, trying to cycle. I'm really just trying to cycle into an army card so I can get rid of, I think, I'm so I can get rid of Lauren. We'll see. All right, no hits, one hit. They get one back. Um, I'm guessing I do a full onslaught of four. No onslaught. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, this is better. So no onslaught because I have two elites. If I had seven hit points that were just regular units, I would probably take some to finish the combat. But this way, because I have elites, by pressing, I get nine more dice just to roll more sixes. And then I can press again and get like eight more dice. So it's a little bit it's a little bit safer, I think, to do it this way. I, I'm gonna you know spend those hit points, but I'm gonna spend them on presses instead of spending them on onslaught, because a single hit point gets me nine dice. A, a single hit to my elite gets me nine dice on to hit on sixes, which is more than what otherwise I just get a half hit point, uh, a half a hit right now from onslaught. All right, anyway. So I press, and I get to draw my Witch King card, Shadow Lengthens. Okay, so now I could, if I wanted to, get rid of um, Power Too Great. And then attack in with this last character die. That might be cool. And get Lorien under siege with just five hit points and a companion, but still. All right, that could be reasonable. All right, I don't play, oh, what? I'm playing this right here? I didn't, what, Ira, didn't you want to get rid of power too great? I could have, what? So if I hadn't done that, I could have just tried to roll two sixes. And then I could have used that card and Nazgul Search to 
and my mustard and my mustard die to get rid of power to great, and then I could have used this character die to attack Lorian. And then I just muster up a little in Moria and go go over there and take it. What's my plan? First of all, why do I even need to play this? I don't have to play this. I can just attack into Fords of Eisen and then use Shadow Lengthens to get these armies from Parth Celebron into Fords of Eisen. I don't know. I guess I'm worried about discarding cards. I'm like, I'm going to discard cards anyway, so might as well do it. All right. I played that. I mean, it did get me the two hits, so okay, but whatever. I would have rolled a six. Okay, they get one hit back. That combat is done. I guess I was worried about Thrandall's archers. All right. So that was bonkers. They had three elites and two regulars in Erebor. They had three elites and two regulars in Woodland Realm. And I did spend a significant amount of mustering and some reinforcements, but still, that's that's unlikely. All right, I hit them on the second movement. They get revealed. Okay, I muster into Orthanc. All right, I guess my plan is to just come take Rohan. They move, what? What, what? They're moving from Fords of Aizen to Westamnet with their character die? Why are they just hiding? What? Okay, that, that makes no sense to me. I guess they're worried about, they know they don't have any strategy cards. They know I know they don't have any strategy cards. They don't want to you lose those units to an attack. Okay. I moved to Eastamnet. So they just spent a character die to move to Fords. Yeah, I would have hidden. Okay. Um, I got Ulukai, Ring Racer Abroad. Very happy to see. Man, I've drawn just crazy good cards this whole game. Like, every single card has been a good card, basically. I mean, what more can you ask for? I mean, Corsairs of Umbar, Cruel Weather. Those two cards are incredible. All right. And I had the Shadow Lengthens. I mean, Shadows Gather. And Shadows Lengthens, which I played. Okay. Anyway, I've definitely been getting lucky so far. All right. I must... I, I allocate an eye. Roll one more. They get a couple musters. They hide the fellowship, right? And so unless they just drew scouts, I'm going to get to attack from Eastamnet into Westamnet, which is not pleasant for them. And I'm going to I'm going to be able to actually besiege Helm's Deep with these Isengard units. All right, so I muster up. They move the fellowship. I, I miss them. All right, so I play Cruel Weather here. First of all, because I get to move them back onto this army in East Midnight. And second of all, because now it's impossible for them to make it to Mordor this round. Whew, this is a brutal game for free people. All right, they play there and back again, separating two companions so that now they can use their character die to get into Helm's Deep with them. Okay. I'm just moving into Fords of Eisen. Nothing to see here. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Look at how painful this is for free people. Like, a Rohan is now advanced one towards war. I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to besiege. They're going to have to retreat from Westamnet into Helm's Deep. And now I'm going to get to besiege Helm's Deep. Rohan's still not going to be at war, and then I'm going to get to use an army movement to take Edoras and Westamnet at the same time, putting Rohan to war, but having captured all of their settlements. Just completely, wow, controlling Rohan. This, yeah, so I think you just leave the units at Fords of Eisen. I mean, it's kind of unbelievable that they have not drawn a scouts yet. Like, that is incredibly low odds. But... I still might have kept them in Fords of Eisen and then just hope I don't roll sixes when I attack because then at least Rohan gets to war a little bit and this muster becomes more more relevant. All right, so I attack Helm's Deep. Yeah, now they're one away from war. 
They draw a strategy card here. Okay. If they get Riders of Theoden, they can play that because they have companions in there. Um, and they do have one end card, which they can use in combat, that can dish out quite a lot of damage. Okay, though, this is, wow, this is rough for free people. All right, and look at this gigantic army I have. So that's the army from Dol Golder. They went to Dimrald Dale. You turned like power to great. See you later, Legolas. Good job fending us off from Lorien. Though I did not have to play it that way. I could have attacked Lorien. I guess this worked out pretty well for me. I don't know where I'm getting my last two victory points, though. Oh, right. I have Corsairs of Umbar. Whew, man. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and then Corsairs of Umbar. Jeez. And then Ringwraiths are abroad. Oof. Okay. Um, Gondor has advanced towards war. Do they have carried in ships? The thing was, two turns ago, uh, sorry, this turn, I knew that they were at zero strategy cards at the start of this turn. And they drew one and they just drew another. But I know that the odds of them having carried in ships are pretty low because they went to zero cards. So that does give information. All right. Oh, did they top deck Amrael of Dol Amroth? Wow. Okay. Well, that's something at least. Did you just draw it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Still, there were a couple cards there. They did have Amrael of Dol Amroth to draw. They had um, Cairdon's ships to draw. Man, Free People has been doing a great job defending their strongholds. Look at this. They have companions in there. They have elites in here. They had just insane defense of, of dew that that fell anyway. Book of Mazarbal. I mean, this is, yeah, it's a little unfair to, to free people. All right. I'm going to play Ring Wraiths or Abroad to try and take this out. Yeah. Position the Witch King. I'm a little surprised I didn't leave any Nazgul in Helm's Deep, but I guess I just figure I'm going to reposition later. I'm going to have Nazgul search to reposition them with a Palantir next round and also revealing the Fellowship. So, all right. Um, and better to take out Dual Amroth while I can. I'm going to play They Are Terrible. All right. They Are Terrible. That's why I have the extra leadership. All right. Two hits. They get three back. Respectable, but not going to be enough. Um... I don't press. That's a little risky. What if they draw Corsairs of Umbar? I'm a little surprised by that. I guess it's relatively unlikely that I can get six hits. I guess I think I have Ulug High if it turns out they have Corsairs of Umbar. I mean, they have Cairdon ships and the odds of them drawing Kirtan ships relatively low, but still that is a risk. All right, fighting Urkai, dreadful spells. Wow, these are just great cards. Bilbo Song and King Brandsman. Okay, they have not gotten as lucky as I have with their cards. All right, they declare the fellowship. Um, I allocate an eye, roll one more, and you know these Palantirs. Maybe you're like, ah, oh, that's not so great, but. I have Dreadful Spells. I have Fighting Urkai. I have Nazgul Search. So I have, because my cards have been so good, these Palantirs are totally productive for me. Yeah. All right. So I think we, I just corrected it, or they corrected it, that I'm at six victory points. What can they do? This, this game is crazy. All right. They move the Fellowship once. I'm trying to just take out, um, I guess I'm just trying to take out Dol Amroth as fast as possible. And I have this Palantir anyway. If I take them out right here, unlikely, but if I do, then I can immediately pivot the Nazgul with Nazgul Search. Maybe. And it's just a little safer, I guess. I'm just a little worried playing it safe. All right. I get two hits. That's still above average, slightly above average for me. They move again. They get hit and revealed. All right, so now I can't um, I can't use Nazgul Search to reposition my Nazgul, but who really cares because I have this Palantir for fighting Urukai. 
All right, I attack um, Dol Amroth, no card, no card. I get my six, that's that. All right, so I ended up having quite a bit of a surplus of an army, but yeah, maybe I could have pushed it a little faster, but the Fellowship is not doing that well. All right, they draw a strategy card. Oh God, <laughs> just draw Kyrdan and ships. Oh my God. Yeah, that's how this game is going for free people. Yeah, okay. Um, I move my Nazgul around. They hide the fellowship. I move my armies in. What can they do? They move the fellowship once. I get a hit and they take one corruption. Okay. I play fighting Urkai because I have an insane army and what can they do? All right, they play daylight. I have we come to kill. I get, I get two hits on the daylight anyway. I mean, it doesn't matter. I have so many. This is whatever. This is just a blowout. Um, okay, see you later. Good try. Boromir, that's it. Um, okay, so that was a turn seven victory, military victory. And I was plus four on sixes. That does not surprise me. Let's look at the statistics. So, yeah, plus four on sixes, plus only one on number of attacks. I actually had relatively balanced action dice. It's just, I think my cards, my cards were just ridiculously good. And then in the combats where it mattered, I rolled the sixes. And because I had such good combat cards, the fours and the fives were hitting also. Wow. What a game. I mean, there's, I, I don't think, yeah. Sometimes that's how the games go. Um, it is nice, I guess, for me to have started the elimination rounds that way. Uh, hope you enjoyed the game. Sorry to my opponent for the good luck on my part. And hopefully game two will be a little more exciting. Uh, or a little more balanced. I mean, that was kind of exciting, but still balanced. Um, MVP Legolas completely scared me off of Lorien, but unfortunately, other things fell. All right, good game. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good rest of the day.